They are humanity's first envoys to interstellar space, a dynamic duo serving out a decades-long mission that began all the way back in the days of the original Star Wars, the Atari 2600, the debut of the Talking Heads, and the invention, believe it or not, of the High Five. Since 1977, the Voyager probes have traveled on a long and winding journey out into nowhere, past Jupiter, past Saturn, past Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, and then past something called the Heliopause, where the magnetic field and the solar winds of our own sun are too far away to be felt. For spacecrafts that were only expected to last for five years, the Voyager probes have achieved some truly exceptional feats across their nearly 47-year lifespans, and they've showed no signs of quitting anytime soon. Or well, that is, until now. Because while Voyager 2 is still doing well on its march through the cosmos, Voyager 1 hasn't been so lucky. Instead, the lonely space probe is beginning to show its age in a major way. Adrift a full 15 billion miles from home, Voyager 1 has started down the robot equivalent of going senile. And now there's a very real chance that its ability to communicate with Earth might be lost forever. At the time that it was assembled, Voyager 1 was a state-of-the-art spacecraft, compiling the best science and machinery that humanity had to offer. Assembled by the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, which we've actually done a full-length video on if you'd like to learn about that, Voyager 1 features thrusters, gyroscopes, scientific instruments, onboard digital computers, and a large and very important radio antenna with which it's maintained continuous contact with planet Earth since it was launched into space in 1977. Suffice it to say, Voyager is not particularly modern and nor is it particularly easy to operate. These days, a message sent from Earth takes 22 and a half hours to reach Voyager and any responses arrive another 22 and a half hours later. But given that it completed all of its intended mission roles before a high proportion of our viewing audience was born and that now it's not really conducting high priority experimentation as much as it is seeing how far it can get, well, the Voyager mission now mostly just consists of keeping up contact. But if Voyager 1 were to stop communicating back to Earth, well, that would be the end of it. If earthly scientists have no way of receiving communications from Voyager 1, we don't know whether it's still functioning or where it is. Technically speaking, we wouldn't even know if it still exists, or if it's perhaps been T-boned by a passing asteroid or something. Lose Voyager 1, or Voyager 2 for that matter, and the world isn't going to end. But humanity does lose precious and exceptionally rare data about what exists past interstellar space, and the Voyager mission, as well as the myriad benefits and records that come from it, will end. For Voyager 1's mission control team, the task now is to try and keep the probe chatting with Earth for as long as possible. That's sometimes a very arduous process. After all, when problems do come up, mission control has no ability to impose 21st century solutions on their 20th century hardware. They've got to dig through old manuals, try and replicate the much more rudimentary programming used on Voyager 1, and address the problems with the tools and solutions they were given by scientists who've long since retired. As much of a headache as we can imagine that job probably is, it's also a job that Voyager Mission Control is really rather good at. But that all changed on November the 14th, 2023, and it changed in a way that might take Voyager 1 with it. Like the vast majority of other computer systems across modern history, the Voyager 1 probes onboard computers use binary code. That is to say, they use a language made up of strings of ones and zeros, into which you can encode anything from a book to a video game to, in the case of the Voyager probes, programs that allow the spacecraft to carry out their mission. But when Mission Control received its expected transmissions from Voyager 1 in mid-November of 2023, they found not a readable piece of information encoded into binary, but just a bunch of meaningless ones and zeros. Specifically, they got the same basic pattern over and over again, 101010 and so forth. It was as if Voyager 1's onboard systems were stuck in some way, sucked into a repeating loop from which it couldn't emerge. Until the issue was fixed, no scientific data could be beamed back to Earth, meaning that if the problem persisted indefinitely, the Voyager 1 mission was basically done. By the time NASA made the problem public, Mission Control had already figured out what the source of the issue was. The flight data system, one of three onboard computers in total, was failing to communicate properly with another system inside the probe, its Telemetry Modulation Unit, or TMU. While the flight data system gathers internal and external data on Voyager 1 and its surroundings, the TMU is supposed to package that information up and beam it back to Earth. Unfortunately, that's not happening. Said Suzanne Dodd, head of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory's Voyager mission team, to NPR, quoting, It basically stopped talking to us in a coherent manner. 
As for why that had happened, one leading theory was that Voyager 1 had experienced something called a bit flip in its memory, a relatively easily corrected problem that would have been caused by a high energy cosmic particle basically smacking into Voyager 1 and knocking a bit of code out of alignment. But because of how messed up the probe's transmissions were, engineers back on Earth were unable to figure out where the bit flip would have happened. Without that information, a fix was impossible. Before their public statement was put out, NASA attempted the tried and true first step of all computer repair, turning the computer off and then turning it back on again. But unfortunately, Voyager 1 couldn't be restored to an earlier state like NASA has hoped, meaning that now the mission control team was in a position to do some head scratching. Like we mentioned previously, Voyager's systems are very old compared to most computers, so on top of a whole lot of cross-referencing old manuals, NASA's programmers had to spend a while gaming out the potential unexpected results of a transmission that might be sent or interpreted in the wrong way. After all, the last thing NASA or anybody else wanted was for Voyager 1 to receive a transmission that fixed the current problem, but replaced it with a much more serious one. As Voyager mission team leader Suzanne Dodd explained it, they're doing a lot of work to try and get into the heads of the original developers and figure out why they designed something the way they did, and what we could possibly try that might give us some answers to what's going wrong with the spacecraft. All that is made worse by the fact that Voyager's systems, despite being rather complex, are really, really underpowered by any modern standard. Dodd continued, The button you press to open the door of your car, that has more computing power than the Voyager spacecrafts do. Basically, on the Voyager probe's best days, modern day scientists have to both dumb down their instructions to a pretty incredible degree and also phrase things just perfectly in order to not upset the balance of the probe's internal systems. Think of it as if you're trying to get a three year old to do some fairly complex electrical engineering, except in this case, the three year old is also having a meltdown, just like Voyager 1 appears to be doing. Now, we should specify here that this issue is not the only one Voyager 1 has had over its lifespan, and it's not particularly unique for the probe either. Voyager 1 last had a problem somewhat similar to this back in 1981, and it's logged a number of other glitches and bugs across its long life. Voyager 2 was out of contact with planet Earth for much of the year 2020, and was inadvertently told by Mission Control in 2023 to point its antenna in the wrong direction, an issue that's since been corrected. But even though while issues with the Voyager craft aren't exactly new, this one's never been seen before, and if NASA couldn't work through the issue with Voyager 1, there was a non-zero chance that eventually it would claim Voyager 2 as well. The first note of hope for Voyager 1's situation came nearly four months after the problem was first discovered on March the 3rd, 2024. Over the prior several weeks, NASA had been sending occasional messages to Voyager 1, testing out hunches on what sorts of transmissions might restore communications. Typically, they'd involve some sort of command prompt, asking the probe to attempt to execute different elements of its software package. But these pokes, as they were termed, were a bit of a mixed bag when it came to the results. The good news, at least, was that they always got a response. Bad news? Well, that's that when NASA prodded Voyager 1 and said, hey buddy, wanna wake up? Voyager 1 would invariably startle back to life, screaming 101010. 010 carries on. But all of that changed on March the 3rd, because mixed into the usual gibberish from Voyager 1, this transmission contained something a bit different. The string of code that NASA found, or specifically that NASA's deep space network found, while operating powerful radio antenna that enable communication with probes like Voyager 1, still didn't make much sense. The sequence was all out of order, it wasn't intelligible, but it was something different. And somebody, a yet unnamed engineer from the deep space network, ended up being able to decode it. What that engineer found was a complete readout of the internal memory of Voyager 1's flight data system, the same system where a suspected bit flip or some other internal issue caused the probe's ongoing issues. With that readout now available to NASA, it could be compared to previous readouts that had been sent before the probe's current issue ever started, allowing NASA to find the discrepancy and hopefully give a clear fix. Developing that fix will be another problem in its own right. After all, whatever NASA sends next will have to be cross-checked and tested like everything else to ensure that it doesn't accidentally disrupt some other system. That process is going to take time, and given that this particular episode was written just a few days after Voyager 1's return message was recoded, we don't have information yet on what NASA's message will ultimately look like. But with any luck, it'll be able to shake Voyager 1 back into coherence, or at the very least establish a mechanism to consistently get Voyager 1 to send its new, strangely coded transmissions so that NASA can put the probe's information back into a language that humans can operate in. Whether NASA will be able to recover the Voyager 1 probe or whether it'll ultimately be impossible to drag out of its stupor, we won't know for some time. But what we do know is that NASA and the broader scientific community would be pretty sad to see Voyager 1 go. Voyager 1 still does do real, important scientific work, funneling data on interstellar space back to planet Earth to assist on all sorts of scientific inquiries related to what exactly happens in so-called dead space. If Voyager 1 goes offline, 
but Sister Probe can't pick up the slack. Voyager 2's instruments are a bit different, and programs that use Voyager 1 data can't get the same stuff from Voyager 2. Make no mistake, the people in charge of the program and the people using Voyager data in their research understand that the probe's last days will eventually come. Said Voyager scientist Linda Spilker, who's been part of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory since the year the Voyager probes were launched, quote, whether it's this particular anomaly that gets us or one downstream or the spacecraft gets old enough and cold enough, one day you'll go to look for it and it's just stopped working. But the current estimates around the Voyager probe's overall lifespan are not particularly rosy for reasons that have very little to do with Voyager 1's ongoing problems. Partly because of the machine's advanced age and partly due to the rate of new problems arising, NASA is working to manage expectations and currently only has the stated objective of keeping the instruments running on board both crafts through 2025. And to be fair, it's hard to fault NASA for taking a cautious approach. As this incident has shown, either of the Voyager probes could crap out any day now. But the expectation for over four decades has been that they'd both crap out eventually. Their plutonium power systems won't last forever, even if the issues with Voyager 1 were to be solved tomorrow. Said longtime Voyager team member Stamatios Kremiglis, My motto for a long time was 50 years or bust, but we're sort of approaching that. After years and years trying to extend the Voyager probe's lifespans, turning off non essential systems to keep their scientific instrumentation functioning, it's clear to the Voyager team that the final chapter is coming imminent. Before long, the question at hand will be which of the probe's scientific instruments to turn off permanently in order to stretch out the remaining power supply until the onboard power eventually drops so low that it can't sustain a single instrument. The ETA for when each of the probes eventually winks out for the final time is 2030. After that, the probes themselves will still keep moving through space, carrying their famous golden records and those records accounts of humanity should they ever be found by another species. But for all intents and purposes, they'll have become space drunk. In about 40,000 years, Voyager 1 will drift within two light years distance of a faraway star in the Camelopardalus constellation, while Voyager 2 will make a similar pass around the same time by the star Ross 248. In nearly 300,000 years, Voyager 2 will be close enough to wave hello to the star Sirius, the brightest star we earthly beings can see in the night sky. But whether either probe actually makes those stops on its journey, we humans will never know. Even if Voyager 1 comes back online just perfectly, both of the probes will have stopped phoning home a very, very long time before they come close to another celestial body. By the time that they do, we'll have no idea where they are or whether they've even survived in outer space. Nor do we, here on Earth, know whether any person of that time will even recall that the Voyager probes existed in the first place.